Hi, I'm Jim Smyrny Topless, and this is MedPick's Case of the Week, number 681, an incidental finding. We have no significant disclosures or conflict of interest to report. This week's patient is a 54-year-old woman with a long history of cardiac problems. She's currently an inpatient after the elective placement of an implanted defibrillator. A CT scan was ordered after the procedure because of decreasing hemoglobin and hematocrit. This is a representative section from the upper abdomen of her non-contrast CT scan. We can see the abdominal aorta, the inferior vena cava, we can see the liver, the stomach with some food contents, and we can see the spleen. Normally the liver is slightly hyperdense or hyperattenuating or wider than the muscles and the spleen on a non-contrast CT scan. But if we compare this patient's scan to our patient, we can see that in our patient the liver looks way too white. The attenuation seems to be way too high. How can we confirm this? The normal liver has 50 to 70 Hounsfield units and it's typically 5 to 10 units higher than the attenuation of the spleen. Of course, these Hounsfield units are named after Godfrey Hounsfield, or Sir Godfrey Hounsfield, who won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1979 for his invention of the CT scanner along with Alan Cormack. If we actually measure the attenuation of the liver using an ROI or region of interest, in our patient, it's 107 Hounsfield units and the normal range is only up to 70 Hounsfield units. So this patient's liver is way too high in attenuation. We also see some post-surgical changes, but the hyperdense liver is the main finding in this particular patient. So what is the differential diagnosis for a hyperdense or hyperattenuating liver? Most commonly it's going to be due to a deposition or storage disorder. Hemochromatosis, where iron is deposited, may be hereditary or may be secondary to a number of processes including blood transfusions, increased oral intake, or ineffective erythropoiesis, such as occurs in thalassemia. Glycogen storage disease, colloidal gold therapy, which has been used for rheumatoid arthritis, Wilson's disease, where copper is deposited in the liver, Thoratrast, which was a contrast medium used in the 1920s to 1950s and contained thorium, and amiodarone, which is an antiarrhythmic drug that contains iodine. Amiodarone is an antiarrhythmic medication, and each molecule contains two atoms of iodine. The normal dose of amiodarone is going to be much larger than the typical dietary ingestion rate for iodine. Chronic amiodarone therapy increases hepatic parenchymal attenuation, even with normal dosage. And that's because the liver is the primary site of metabolism of amiodarone, which is then excreted into the bile. If you withdraw the amiodarone therapy, it may take weeks to months before the liver will go back to its normal attenuation. This coronal reformation from the same patient demonstrates the heart, the abdominal aorta, the inferior vena cava, and the liver, which is remarkably hyperattenuating in comparison to the adjacent structures. So this was a patient with amiodarone liver hyperdensity or hyperattenuation, not a toxic problem, but an unusual and incidental finding. I want to thank you for attention. I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and I approve this message.